Good evening, everyone. My name is Mike Odom, and I'm the Assistant Executive Director for Corporate Partnerships with the ABCA. Since 1945, the ABCA has been bringing great coaching minds together to educate, mentor, guide, and support the greatest game in the world. We're excited that you've joined us tonight. We have a great webinar in store for you, brought, by, brought to you by ABCA Convention Exhibitor and Partner, the Futures app. A few things to note, a copy of tonight's webinar will be uploaded to the ABCA video library tomorrow via abca.org. We also want this webinar to be interactive. Feel free to post comments or questions in the chat box, and we'll get to those throughout the evening. Tonight, you're going to learn how the Futures app is the future of player development. MLB caliber tools geared for the daily use of players and coaches. Video analysis, remote coaching, strength and conditioning, MLB drills, and an option to build and create your own database for your team. Tonight, we've got three incredible presenters. Jake Hirabayashi, founder and CEO of the Futures app. Ryan Braun, five-time Silver Slugger winner, Rookie of the Year, 15-year MLB veteran, MVP, and Mark Holzmer, owner of the Colorado Slammers. Jake, Ryan, Mark, thank you for putting together an awesome webinar tonight for our coaches. Take it away. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you guys for having us. We're excited to you know, kick things off and kind of introduce uh, the Futures app to ABCA and uh, all the coaches who joined. So thank you, everyone who's here. Um, we're excited to, to give you a behind the scenes look at what we're doing. Um, so I'll jump right in. Um, so here we go. We're going to start with basically um, a player's view, and then I'll switch to a coach's view, and then I'll wrap up with a web, ad web admin. And then I'll let <clears throat> Ryan and Mark uh, jump in, tell a little bit about their experience with the Futures app and how they uh, see it helping both their organization and then Ryan, just how it's you know been impact impactful for him and the players that he's brought on to this project. Um, so I'll jump right in. So right now, uh, you guys can see my screen. Um, we have a player account right here. Um, we have five navigation tabs at the bottom. Going from left to right, we have feed. And on the far right, we have profile. Uh, the feed is exactly what you think it is. It's a chronological assortment of drills, tips on mental game, uh, so on and so forth. And it is chronological and you guys can control this for your organization. Um, we have pre-populated the environment in this account with just major league drills that we've created. And you can kind of see me go through this. Um, the interesting part about drills is there's a three-pronged structure here. So we have a video asset at the top, a collapsible drill description, as well, and then an interactive piece here at the bottom. Um, so you can kind of see uh, the reps fill out here at the bottom. Um, and you guys can also create your own drills using this exact same structure. Um, so we all know that every organization has their own drills that are unique to them. And we wanna give you guys the opportunity to create drills in this exact same structure. Uh, I'll jump right in here, just so you can get a feel for the content creation that we did. Um, we shot everything in 4K. Um, we worked with 16 Major League Baseball players that Brian brought into our ecosystem and uh, we shot over 300 drills and we'll continue to add to this drill database as time goes on. Um, I'm gonna mute this just so you can kind of see what's going on. Um, but we shot everything in 4K, like I mentioned, multiple camera angles. Um, on the hitting side, we have three camera angles, open side view, behind so you can see ball flight and then top down so you can see where guys are getting in the box, contact point on certain drills. And then on the pitching and defense side, we have two to three camera angles just depending on what the drill requires. Um, so you can get a feel for it here, just uh, as cameras flip. This is Willie Adamas from Brewers, uh, one of my favorite players, <laughs> great personality and has some great movement tips uh, as far as swing goes. Um, so you'll see camera sw switch here in just a second. Um, let that progress here, top down, and then we get a look at ball flight here behind as well. Um, just to promote backspin and kind of get an inside look at ball flight there. Um, sweet. So back to the feed too. Um, I'm just going to jump right into another feature. Um, in the top right hand corner, we have uh, our basically remote coaching suite. So this connects players to coaches, that diamond icon in the top right. Um, this allows players to send video directly to your staff. Um, we break out the video submission into different categories just so um, it's a little more organized. Um, you can see I'm a little partial to hitting because I was a position player myself. Um, so if I go ahead and choose this category, hit the bottom button, the bottom blue button, 
we prompt you on how to submit a video. Um, landscape, we just prefer it fits the coach's screen a little bit better, but players can submit any video any way they want. I'll go ahead and hit submit here. Um, a first time user will look like this. They can easily upload or shoot from their camera by hitting the red dot. Um, then their videos will populate under their folder. Um, I'll open the yearbook a little bit. I played at UCLA. Let you guys see one of my swings. Uh, players can then switch categories by tapping at the top, crop the video at the bottom, and then ultimately save and share notes. And then this is where uh, the coaching staff really comes into play. Um, so underneath that video thumbnail, you can see select a coach. And this is where players can send, you know, position specific drills to specific coaches or just send a, a video to a coach that they want to work with. Um, so I can go ahead and hit select a coach. I'll go ahead and choose myself here. And then I will add some text. So I'll just say A, B, C, A webinar, opening the yearbook. And then I'll hit submit for review and it's off to my coach. Um, so I'll flip to an iPad really quick just so you can get the feel for a coach. Um, so let me switch really quick. There we go. Sweet. So switch to an iPad. It's just a bigger screen. Um, you can see the structure is ultimately the same. Um, top right hand corner is the coach's inbox. And if I go ahead and tap right there, it'll take me to what is similar to an email inbox. So you'll have the category, date and time, who it's from, and a reference number. We organize our inboxes from oldest to newest, just so no players get neglected. Um, I, was a, I was a role player in 39, 39th round draft pick, so I'm pulling one for my role players here and putting uh, the oldest videos at the top of an inbox. Um, you can see the one at the bottom is the one that I just sent. Um, so I'll go ahead and tap right there. You can see the text, the video, an option to reject the video, and then open in Coach Editor. Um, so we give you as a coach an option to watch the video before you reject it by just hitting this button right here. Um, if you choose to reject the button or reject the video, we have some canned, uh, responses here. You can also type your own response for rejecting. Um, all this does is send a notification back to the player saying, please submit another video. Your video has been rejected for the following reasons. Um, if I go down to this bottom button for opening and coach video editor, this is where you have a ton of tools. Um, so you can zoom in to make this video fit the screen. Um, you have scrubber dial here at the bottom to go frame by frame. I can control video playback in the bottom left with this one over one icon. I can go as slow as one eighth speed, one half speed, so on and so forth. Um, and then I have this scrubber dial here to kind of scrub through the video and get into more of a frame by frame cadence. And what's great here is we also have more tools. So. In the top right-hand corner, that little gear dial pops out. You can draw and show where my hands are at. I can compare. And this is kind of where we separate ourselves. So we obviously work with a ton of Major League Baseball players, um, and we have some canned com uh, comparison videos here. So if you want to compare your players to a Major League Baseball player, you can do that with pre-populated videos that we have. Um, Nico Horner was a similar size to me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and Go side by side, Stanford player, uh, now on the Cubs, but similar size, similar position here. Um, so I'll go ahead and get us in a side by side here. And what's great here is now you have split screen. I can now control each side independently if I'd like to. I can make us a similar size. I now have a scrubber dial on each side. So if I just want to focus on Nico, I can get him to a foot strike. Same deal over here with me. I can get myself to foot strike as well. And what's great now is I have this lock button in the center that allows us to sync this video up and we can move things together. So I can get us moving together here. We can draw a comparison, the whole deal. Um, and what's great about our comparison feature as well is we take it a step further. Um, so not only can we compare to specific players that we have, we can also compare to videos that that user has sent in the past. So for example, if you wanna draw a comparison from beginning of fall to beginning of spring, you can. This first drop down menu is user videos, and we remember every single video that specific user has sent. Um, so I can go ahead and pull up a video as a function of time. So this is me on the right with the Minnesota Twins and the FCL, and then me at UCLA. So you can draw a comparison as a function of time, which is pretty cool. Um, sweet.
And the real reason why all these tools are impactful um, is because you can record your screen and voice simultaneously and re-render a new video file and send it back to your, your player. So I'm sure all of you guys have heard of Coach's Eye. Um, so that's similar tool functionality there um, to where you can provide a voiceover um, and provide feedback in real time. Um, so what I'll do now is I'm just going to quickly do a little voiceover and then I will send it back and I'll show you the whole coach's flow. Um, so I'm going to unplug my iPad for just a second and do that. I'm going to keep it short and sweet, a couple annotations, comment on my swing, and then uh, show you the end result. Um, all I'm doing is hitting this red button and then talking over it. So when you hit the red button, it gives you a countdown timer, three, two, one, and then you're good to go. We'll just say, hey, you look pretty good. Looks like you're stacked. Um, and then I'll show you the draw function. Your hands are here. Um, when you're done, you just hit that red button one more time and it takes you to this pop-up window. <clears throat> there you go. So you have three options here. Um, you can dismiss and delete the video, watch it or use the recording. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the recording. And this takes us to our next step of our coach's flow. So you can add text to your breakdown as well. Um, so I'll just say, hey, you look great. Keep it short and sweet. And then this is where, again, we have more functionality for coaches and players alike is you can attach drills. So this blue button in the bottom right um, links straight to our drill database of Major League Baseball players. And you can assign drills to your players um, so they have actual next steps when they get your feedback. Um, this also links to your guys' database. So I can show you a little bit later. Um, you guys have the ability to build out your own drill database as well from a web a web admin just via your desktop. So you can upload videos, text, um, assigned reps as well that's unique to your organization. Um, so very well, instead of Nico Horner, it could be the name of your organization with all of your drills underneath. Um, so just so you can get a feel for it, um, as a coach, I can view the drill by hitting view drill. I can watch the drill if I need to get a little refresher, read the description, and then ultimately what I can do is attach them by hitting this blue button. You can attach as many drills as you want. And then when you hit done, they hyperlink right to the breakdown. So the player doesn't have to leave the app to figure out what he should be doing as far as next steps. And then when you're ready, you just swipe this dial at the bottom and it goes right back to your player. And now I will point this last thing out at the top. You have inbox uploads and completed. While this is uploading in the background, I can go back to inbox open my next video and do my next breakdown while that uploads in the background. So from a workflow standpoint, you guys can get through five, six, seven videos in an hour, depending on how long you spend on each video. Um, so sweet. I'm going to flip back to my iPhone so you can see the end result for the player. Um, so bear with me one second while I switch devices one more time. Okay, cool. So back to the player account here. Um, you can see I have a notification in the top right-hand corner. Every time a video is sent from player to coach or coach to player, um, the receiving party will get a push notification sent directly to their device. And then you can see a notification enumerated inside the app as well. If I go ahead and tap right there, you can see the category in which the video was sent. You can go ahead and tap right there. And then we have the video file that I just created, the text, and then the drills. I can go ahead and tap on the drills. It takes me right to the video. I can watch it, read the description, do the drill if I'd like to. And then I have the coach's breakdown as well. Um, which I can make full screen for you guys. Um, I'm not a coach, so it was a pretty short breakdown. This will come to life with everything that you guys do. Um, so it's just really to get a feel for the voiceover, the tools, and then some of the functionality as the end as the end user being oh, a player. I want to say, hey, you look pretty good. Looks like you're stacked. Um, and then I'll show you the draw function. Your hands are here. Um, Short and sweet, but to the point, and it'll definitely come to life uh, when you guys do it as coaches. Um, so very, very cool. Awesome. Um, so the next thing that I'm going to show you is the falling tab on the bottom. So I'm going to go from feed to workout. Um, one thing that we tried to do here with the Futures app is give you guys a consolidated offering. So database, drills, video analysis tools, remote coaching, and then also strength and conditioning. Um, so we have a fully operational strength and conditioning calendar. Um, this is all controlled from a web admin. Um, for those of you who have strength and conditioning as a part of your program, you guys can do all of your programming and disseminate it to your players. Um, for those of you who do not have a full-time strength coach or you want to outsource that, 
Um, we do offer six programs a month. Um, so three are on the body weight side, three are on the strength and conditioning side with weights. Um, and they're broken down into three categories, pitcher, position player, and two-way. Um, and actually the former strength and conditioning coach at UCLA, um, while I was there uh, in 2019, he's doing our programming. So you're getting high quality uh, programming that's sport specific and position specific. Um, so you can kind of see from an overview standpoint here, just kind of what this looks like. Um, coaches and instructions as well. And then if I go ahead and start the workout, it takes me through a readiness, a readiness deal here. It's completely interactive and responsive. I can edit all of these scores just by tapping on them. If I want to say I'm awfully stressed presenting to a group of coaches, I can, and then I can go ahead and hit start training. Um, and this takes you to basically a linear flow of a strength and conditioning program. Um, so we have the ability to subset exercises, um, create different blocks and sets as well. And then one thing that's very, very big for us is having a video attached to every single movement. So that way players never have to leave the app to figure out what they should be doing. Um, a couple other facts here, top right-hand corner is an overall progress tracker. You end the top in the center, you have total reps and weight for each workout. Um, this little guy right here is a block progress tracker that is collapsible. And then you, players can fill in their weight. And then for body weight exercises, they can just go ahead and check it off and it'll add reps. Um, so you can kind of see this whole thing go. I'll collapse this. Um, so you can kind of see me just work through an exercise here. Go ahead and do it. I'll add some weight here. So I'll just do 250 pounds. I'm not doing 250 pound dumbbell rows, not anymore. <laughs> I don't think I ever could have, but just so you can get a feel for us counting weight there at the top. Um, so pretty cool here. You get the gist of it. Um, this is all editable from a web admin. If you guys want to do that, um, I can dive into that a little bit later. Um, and I'll just kind of show you how those two interact. Um, so moving right along here to the video tab, um, this is available on both player accounts and coach accounts. Um, this is more geared towards like the in-person cage setting. You want to shoot something really quick, pull it up, slow-mo it, draw on it, show it to your player, um, or even a player working in, in like kind of like a independent way. If they want to shoot something with their friends or teammates, they can do this, slow-mo it, have some cool tools. Um, and you have all the same tools that I just showed you in your coach's feature, absent the ability to record your screen and voice. So I can just kind of show you that same swing here. You zoom in, I can slow-mo, I can draw the whole deal. Um, and then you have also have access to all of these major league player folders as well. And then from a web admin, you guys can actually create your own comparison folders as well. So if you guys wanted to add for example, major league players that we don't have or um, examples for your program of some of the players who are really successful, you can add them here and have it as a resource for all the players on your team. Um, super cool. So next tab over, I have the R players tab. This is really a database tab. Uh, so you can kind of see how we organize our content. Um, so each player that we have part of the project, um, they have their own folder and player card. Um, and you can also add your own here as well. Um, which I'll show you in a second. We have the Futures app folder at the top. I just made my team as the Futures app and I can kind of show you what that looks like. Um, so for those of you who are less familiar with uh, the players we have, I can kind of do a slow, slow scroll here. Um, we have 16 players, some of the best players in the world. Uh, Ryan is excited to share a little bit about them and just kind of how they got involved and how Ryan got involved a little bit later. Um, but we have some pretty sweet series from you know catching with JT Real Muto and Will Smith to you know pitching with Jack Flaherty, Blake Trine and Mike Lorenzen. Um and then obviously some unbelievable hitters as well. Um, so just so you can kind of see what one of these player folders looks like, I'll go into Ryan's folder here. Um, you can see a quick bio at the top. Um, anything that's posted to feed from this database folder will show up right here. And then you have his drills as well. Um, and then you guys saw kind of what the drill structure looks like. Um, you can see the collapsible drill description, uh, the video asset, and then the interactive piece as well. Uh, sweet. So I'll jump to the player profile really quick. Um, and this is kind of just a consolidation of everything that that single player does in the app. So in the center, you have workout totals from a web rep standpoint, a weight standpoint, a time standpoint. I can also toggle over and we keep track of drill reps as well. Um, down here at the bottom, this heart icon saves every single post that that player likes on the feed. And it creates kind of like a hand curated feed for them on their profile. If they want to save a drill, a tip of the day that you guys post, they can do that. Um, and I can kind of show you what it's like to build an asset here too. So um, touching on this, 
and I'll, I'll show you a little bit more on the web admin, but you can create like anything you want. So we can have video images, a series of images, a series of videos as well. Um, a lot of our cli college clients are building out scouting reports. And this is kind of an example of what a scouting report could look like. Um, I used a <laughs> game highlight from when I was in college, just, just uh, so you can see it just as an example, but you can add images. Here's a, just kind of like pitch frequency and then ultimately a video asset as well. So you guys can create just about anything you want. You can do a series of videos um, to create scouting reports or even messages that you want to share with your team. Um, sorry for the long hair there, but uh, you, you get the gist of it there. Um, another cool thing here is this plus icon. Um, we allow players to basically build out a routine. Ryan can speak on this too, but the importance of routine definitely gets enumerated as you climb levels. Um, it's something that I got used to in college. Um, so we wanted to give players the opportunity to build out their own routine. So this is where players can pull drills from drills that you guys create or from our drill database and save them right to their profile and have a daily workflow. Um, so we're trying to account for, you know, getting young players and players in college even um, in the habit of doing something uh, over and over again and getting more in love with the process than really results. Um, so you can kind of see here, I can edit sets and reps at the bottom. I can add reps here. And just so you guys see it work, we have drill totals at the top, 180 reps. I can go ahead and hit this blue button to submit. And then we jump to 190. So cool way to keep track of daily progress um, and also to kind of iron in that routine in the importance of routine in a game like baseball. Um, so next, this diamond icon on the profile page. This is my favorite part of the entire app. Um, I was a fall American in college, so um, I would kill it in the, in the fall struggle in the spring. Um, so this is like literally because of my career. Um, this is a complete ledger of all the coaching sessions that players have. Um, so if they're struggling in the spring, they can scroll back in time to a, to a place where they had good feels and hopefully get out of a slump. So I can read the coach's text, pull up the video instantly, hear the comments <laughs> of the coach, um, and then hopefully get back to good feels right away. Um, so pretty cool there. Um, sweet. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to switch my display to show you a little bit about the desktop version of the app. And then, um, I will also, um, after that, kick it off to Ryan and Mark. I know I jumped right in. Okay. So I'll let them introduce themselves and then tell a little bit about the project, how it's impacted them. Um, and then we can open up the Q and A. So bear with me while I change my view one more time and we will get this going. Okay. On the left, we have our desktop web admin, um, and then on the right, we have our phone. And this is really just so you can see how the mobile app interacts with the desktop. Because um, really what we want is for you guys to make this your own. We want to house your data and allow you guys to, to, to coach your players in the way that you see fit. So um, you can kind of see on the left here, uh, we have the same tabs that orient on the phone. So you have feed, players, workouts, exercises, so on and so forth. Um, so you can kind of see how all of this interacts. Um, I'll start here just on the database tab. So you can create these, these folders and create your own drills. It's quite simple. Um, so this is the future tab folder. Uh, what I can do really quick is just edit this name just so you can kind of see it. I'll just do ABCA. And then I hit go ahead and hit save. And then if I refresh here on the right, you can see the name change. So this could be the name of your team, then hitting, pitching, so on and so forth. And then you can kind of have house all of the drills that you seem feel relevant for your program all in one place. Um, down here, um, this is the comparison video tab. So this will link to the video tab in the phone. So I uploaded just a quick clip from Will Smith hitting. Um, and you can see here at the bottom, this is a resource for players as well. So this will become available on everyone's device when you put a video here. This is also an option for you to do side-by-side -side comparison in that coaching loop as well. Um, so a ton of resources here for you. And you can kind of see me play it on the right. I'm zooming this in. Um, and you have all the tools there as well. So really malleable system and something for you to um, create your own environment. Um, another really cool feature here is if you guys, again, kind of pitching more so to the college people here, but if you're trying to build out basically like a recruiting database, you can also do that. Um, we have an option to show these folders in the mobile app as well. So some of our college clients are also housing 
basically future recruits footage in here and then basically hitting show and mobile, turning off show and mobile app hitting save and then if i refresh here it's now not visible to the current team so it's a great way for you to house pretty much everything in your ecosystem all in one place and not be scattered across multiple platforms um cool so i'll just turn that back on hit save and then we're right back to where we started um cool feed similar deal here so what's really cool is you can create posts, you can create a series of images. And like I was saying, you can push MLB drills to the feed. You can do just about anything you want here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just upload a quick uh, logo just so you can kind of see what this process looks like. So I'll just do ABCA, I'll do test posts here. Um, so a great way to communicate with everyone in your organization. Um, and then let me jump to the feed here. And then what I will do is just upload um, a logo, just so you can kind of see how this works. And I'm a big UCLA fan, as you can imagine. And so there's the Bruins logo and I'll hit publish. And then it goes straight to the feed and I refresh. There it is. Um, so you have your text, you have your, your image asset as well. Um, so pretty easy. And then you can also edit these posts. So if I wanted to add more text, I can say, Bruins are the best, and then hit save, and then it will update in real time. So you have instant update there. Um, I could go ahead and edit this and delete it as well, and kind of see how that works. Cool. Um, now I'll just kind of transition to the workout calendars, um, just so you can kind of get a feel for that. Um, like I said, if you guys want us to populate this, we can. Um, if you guys want to populate this with your own stuff, you can as well. Um, I'll just kind of jump into this workout because it's the same one that's on the right. So if I go ahead and edit this, you can see blocks. So all of these are block one. All of these are block two, so on and so forth. Um, you can drag and drop these to change the order. You can change the coach instructions. You can change sets and reps, create uh, supersets, so on and so forth. Um, so pretty malleable system here as well. Um, so you guys can create exactly what you guys need for your for your players and get it right to them. Um, and then one really cool function here, um, we do understand, you know, kind of like how strength and conditioning programs work. You know, when I was with the Minnesota Twins, oftentimes day one in a four week block would be very similar. Um, day two and day three, so on and so forth, would all be kind of similar on a four week cycle. Um, so what we wanted to do to make your lives easier as coaches was you have the ability to basically copy like a day one extra, day one workout and paste it anywhere on the calendar as well. So you don't have to start from scratch each time. Um, so great way to save kind of time for you guys and then build out programming in a short period of time as well. Um, cool, cool. Um, sweet. So last thing here I have is just exercise database. So you guys can create exercises. Um, so I'll just kind of go into maybe one of these and you can basically create exercises this way. You can name them, add instructions, upload a video. And then those are the videos. I'll just jump straight that, that you see here displayed in the workouts. Um, so whole goal here is to, to maximize efficiency in the weight room, not have guys, you know, switching platforms, trying to figure out what they're doing or should be doing. Um, and they have an example video right there for them. So pretty cool there. Um, Awesome. So that's what I got. I'm going to flip it over to uh, Ryan and Mark here. Um, I do have some questions, I think, kind of open this up. Um, so Ryan, if you kind of want to kick us off, um, just coming from a guy who's, you know, done it all in baseball, you know, <laughs> he played at every level, the highest level for a very, very long time. Um, do you mind just set, shedding some light on just from your, your scope, how, how impactful would it have been to have all of these tools at your fingertips as you kind of went through this journey um, from, you know, being a youth player all the way up to the major league all-star and MVP? Yeah, first, uh, echoing Jake's comments from earlier, appreciate everybody who's taking the time out of their, their busy schedules to join us today and learn a little bit more about the Futures app. Um, for me, there's a number of things that I'm super excited about with this project specifically, but the thing that I'm most excited about uh, just having an opportunity to try to positively impact the next generation of ball players um, as they chase their dreams and ultimately try to reach their potential. Uh, and as I learned more about the capabilities of, of our project, 
Um, you know, I've become more convinced that that each and every player can take something from this uh, that can be beneficial to them as they try to ultimately become the best version of themselves as a baseball player, softball player. Um, and for me, I, I always think about, uh, I now have children of my own, but also myself as an amateur player and all my friends as amateur players, uh, and, and can only imagine how impactful this would have been. Um, just to have an idea of what, what current major leaguers were actually doing, um, how they were thinking about getting better at specific aspects of their game. If I felt like I was struggling with fastballs inside or with elevated fastballs are there specific drills that i could do that i knew major league players were doing that could potentially be impactful for me um so having access to, to information like that would be wildly valuable and then i also think um you know jake touched on it but we all feel better about ourselves at certain points in a season whether it's offensively or defensively or fielding and so to be able to compare and contrast side-by-side -side videos from a time um, when I felt better about my swing uh, during a season would have been something that would have been wildly valuable and could have potentially shortened the periods where I felt like I wasn't at my best as a hitter. Um, so there's a number of, of aspects I'm super excited about with the project itself. But the, the, the biggest uh, thing that I'm hoping we all get out of this is just the, the opportunity to impact the next generation of ballplayers as they, as they chase their dreams. And I think it's not just on the physical side. I think the mental and emotional components of playing this game is, is just as important and significant. Um, and as we film content with guys, one of the things we wanted to touch on was dealing with failure and adversity and going through slumps and the challenges of moving up from a JV team to a varsity team and from high school to college and from college, hopefully into pro ball. And as, as guys move up the ladder, the inevitable challenges and adversity that they face um, to hear how, current major leaguers have dealt with that is something that I think would be super impactful uh, for young players. I'm looking at Jake's screen right here and Corbin Burns is a perfect example. He was, you know, a teammate of mine, a high draft pick, a uh, big prospect came up and, and literally had the highest ERA in the national league, um, literally went back and, and rebuilt himself. And so for him to go through kind of his journey and talk through what it was like to really struggle uh, and then ultimately come back as literally the best pitcher in the National League when he won the Cy Young Award uh, two years ago, I think it was, is something that I think would be really impactful uh, for all young players who have to figure out, um, you know, how to deal with failure and adversity and how to make adjustments. No, that's awesome. Thanks, Ryan. And then I also have another question for you, too, just because, you know, as we've gotten closer, you know, you've filled me in a little bit on your journey, just being in the big leagues. And and just can you do you mind touching on kind of how, our, our video feedback feature and kind of how video feedback throughout the season had helped you and impact you um, kind of make adjustments in real time and how you relied on coaches that way. Yeah, I think everybody learns differently, but I think for most baseball players, uh, we are all at least somewhat visual learners. Um, I think we know what our swings and hitting and pitching mechanics look like when we're at our best. Um, so being able to utilize video is something that was really valuable, obviously, in, in my amateur career, there was very little of that. Um, as I moved up the ranks and ultimately got to the major leagues, there was uh, more and more access to video, um, but very few things like this, even at the major league level, it's just the ability to compare side by side videos and to be able to utilize um, you know, some of the tools that we have to slow things down and use the scrubber to go really slowly uh, and annotate and draw on specific body parts that may or may not be functioning optimally is something that I always found to be really valuable as a hitter. Um, and as I touched on previously, the ability to go back to games that I was playing in April when I may have felt like my swing and mechanics were in a much better place than they were at some point in August uh, is something that's really valuable. And I think particularly as it pertains to amateur players, for these guys to be able to have access to that, I think would be really helpful. And then to be able to suggest drills that could help them, um, whether they're your own drills or drills from our player database that uh, we plan to add to, you know, significantly over time, the goal is to add a bunch of new players and new drills constantly. Um, but so to be able to give them, um, you know, suggested drills that can help them get back to a better place and or show them comparing and contrasting videos from when they were, um, you know, playing at their best is something that I think would be really helpful. Awesome. And then Ryan, do you mind just touching on too, just kind of like what, what the enthusiasm level is from, you know, the guys in the league and kind of the general sentiment from the players we have on here and kind of their goal as well, just with, you know, impacting the next generation of players as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. So one of my main roles in, in being involved in the project was helping to bring in uh, all the current major league guys we have and then the future guys that we plan to add uh, to the project as well. And, and for each of them, I think they all shared kind of my sentiment of being super excited about being able to talk directly to the next generation of ball players, be able to share things that they think would have helped to impact them uh, along the way on their journey. Um, and I've had you know, players reach out to me proactively and say they'd love to be a part of the project because they're super excited about uh, what they've heard from other guys who have been a part of it, uh, you know, so far. Um, but each of these guys is, is really enthusiastic about the idea of being able to talk directly to younger versions of themselves, right? Each of us went through what all of your players are currently going through um, as amateur baseball players who have a dream that are trying to do everything in our power to ultimately be the best version of ourselves as a baseball player. Um, and so for each of these guys, uh, you know, I think all of them um, expressed to us just how excited they are about being a part of the project, about being able to go through their drills and routines um, and being able to talk directly to the young players who they know that they'll be able to hopefully have a positive impact on. Totally. And one thing I'll echo too, kind of just with my experience, um, I'm sure not all of you know this, but I, I was a late round draft pick with the Minnesota Twins, um, 39th round out of UCLA, uh, went straight to the Florida, the, 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 the rookie ball league in, in Florida. And about halfway through the short season in 2019, I got called up to AAA um, right at the trade deadline. So I was like the first guy from my draft class to, to make it there. And I was around, you know, an excellent group of players, you know, from Alejandro de Aza, Willem Rosario, uh, Drew Maggi, who's, you know, kind of blown up recently. Um, and what's so interesting about that experience was, you know, some of those guys who, you know, the Alejandro de Aza's of the world who had played, you know, many years in the big leagues, um, their ability to simplify a lot of movements um, and really teach me in a short period of time, just how they think about things, whether it's approach or how they feel things in the box. I think it's, it was super impactful for me. And, inspired this project as well of just you know kind of hitting home some of the points that you guys share with your players and having you know a, a resource like you know orion a pete alonzo a jazz to to be like hey this is what i was saying this is what jazz pete orion were feeling in the box like try this out so i think having these resources is very very impactful for getting messaging that you are already getting out there um and just giving them with a tangible resource because as you know being a young guy sometimes our heads are a little thick or, or hard or whatever you want to you want to call it um, coming up thinking you know it all so um, yeah I'd, I'd add to that too like we think of everything we're doing with this project as being complementary to what you guys are already teaching your players this isn't like choose what we're doing at the futures app or the way that you guys are trying to teach them we're hoping that with what we're doing it can complement the things you guys are already doing hopefully help to reinforce some of the things that you guys are telling your players to do um, and, and make them incrementally better, right? So this is like something that we think of as just being a tool that you could utilize in addition to the things that you guys are already emphasizing for your players. Sweet. Well, thanks. Thanks, Ryan. I'm going to just pivot really quick to, to Mark. Uh, Mark Holzmer owns the Colorado Slammers. Um, they're out in the, the greater Denver area. If you're on the travel circuit, you've definitely heard of the Slammers. Um, they, they have a strong gumption for player development. They have two facilities. Um, they do a killer job. Uh, Mark was one of our customers. Um, he also played in the big leagues, uh, left-handed pitcher. And uh, Mark, I'd love to just to kind of hear some stuff from you um, since you've been with us for a while now. Um, and just kind of being a facility owner and having teams that span, you know, all ages. Um, how does having all of these tools in a single place kind of make your life a little bit easier um, as you're managing teams, parents, players? First off, uh... I thought the presentation by Jake was amazing. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I mean, hit on everything. I don't think anybody really understands how much is on this app until they actually sit down and see everything that's on it. So um, maybe like a lot of the guys that are watching, coaches, facility owners, you get approached a lot by people trying to get stuff and to get it in their hands and sell it to you. And I was introduced to Jake. Jake got on the phone with me. Explain me what he was going, what he had um, brought up that, you know, he had Ryan Braun involved and that some of the players, and it definitely piqued my interest. Um, he started, gave me basically a shorter version of what he did today. And then he jumped on the plane and he came out and he showed us what he had. And we were blown away. I have to admit, we were blown away. So we use in the past, uh, we still use right now, uh, a bunch of different apps that we are now transitioning into the futures app. So 
We use Team Builder, Team Snap, Team Genius, basically any app that starts with team we have used. And so what we're doing now yeah. and what Jake is building is having all that in one place. And so for us, the cost involved in having these other apps, um, it, it's, it's more than people understand unless you're a facility owner or a coach yourself that you know deals with a lot of kids. So for us, it's been huge. And we, we have been using the app and what we had done in the past, we evaluated players. We have a, a velocity program where we would bring the kids in, we would break down their mechanics and we had to do that on a Word document. So we would basically video the kids just on an iPhone. Um, and then we would have a Word doc and we would break down all their mechanics, go through that with them. Jake showed us exactly how everything worked. We filmed all the kids in the app. We were able then to voice over, make the notes. And then at the end of the program, we bring the kids back in after three or four months and multiple different videos and we show them their progression. And so for that, that, that was just so impactful for us. The next step that we did is we filmed all our videos as well. So we have plyo drills, um, you know, more basic hitting stuff just from, cause we have a lot of youth kids. We have kids from eight, eight years old to 14 years old. Um, our pitching drills, our hitting drills, but the, option for those kids to see then what the best players in the world and the lineup of players that Jake and Ryan have put together is second to none. I mean, when you start throwing out the names that are on there, it gets pe people's attention. But I think Ryan hit on something, I mean, a lot of good points, but one of the huge points on there is they have the, the videos on there of the guys talking about failure and talking about the mental side. And I think that youth kids just think that those guys are just absolute robots and that, you know, there's never, they, they never have a bad day. And it's not true. It's not true. And for those guys to take the time to put that in to their video was, is, is huge. And for the kids to see that it's such a big part because you don't get to, you know, hear that from that side of their, their, their drills are different. I'm telling you the drills that you see those guys have on there, their specific drills are different than I think most people will will have ever seen before. You have, you know, JT Real Muto doing catching, you know, like we talked about with Corbin doing his mechanics, Michael Lorenzen doing his plyo ball drills, Ryan showing you what he did to make him as successful as he was. You know, the players they have in there, it, it is it is really impressive. But once again, we use Team Builder, we use Team Builder for our strength and conditioning we'll be transitioning to using everything on the futures app. And it just makes it so much easier to have all that in one place. You know, for us, when you have all those other apps, you have to go put the kids into each app. Now you have them all in one place. It is just um, for you coaches out there. I mean, I'm sure you're like me, you've used different things and they worked, you know, we use coaches on in the past. Now this is, a really amped up version of, of coach's eye. Um, and with the additional major league players on there, and then your uh, ability to put your library of drills in there, it, it's just something that, I mean, I'm impressed with Jake and, and what he's built, but I'm just telling you, it is something special. And I think if you guys get a chance to use it and try it, you're, you're going to love it. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. I appreciate the kind words. Um, I do want to zoom in on AVP just for a quick second. Um, uh, I, you talked a little bit about kind of what the process looked like before using us and then um, a little bit about the process looking like afterwards. Um, do you mind just talking about like the the efficiency and and how that 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 period, which I believe was like eight weeks of going through footage, doing write ups, so on and so forth being condensed down to just a few days um, with our workflows. Uh, do you mind just touching on that? Yeah, it was just a much longer process. So like I said, we we filmed everybody. Um, then we're trying to take the film, the videos, download it, store it in a spot. We were putting it on zip drives for the guys. So what we would do is we would film everybody. And then we had, like I said, a Word doc, and we had a breakdown of each guy's mechanics. And then we had at the end things that they were going to have to work on throughout the program because we felt, hey, they're going to be in the weight room lifting. They're going to be doing a lot of plyo drills, you know, a lot of velo drills for those of you that 
know what I'm talking about, the running guns and all that, but we really wanted to focus on mechanics. And so they had cues that they had to work on. So we had that. Then during the program, we would film them. And, you know, at the end, we would have, you know, a final where they started, where they finished and stuff that they still need to work on. That was such a laborious process for us to do it the way we were doing it before. And then to be able to have this all in one spot and to be able to voice over and say, hey, you know, hey, Jake, look, look what's going on with your front side. You know, you're still opening up early. You know, your lower half isn't working the way we want. We got to keep working on you know, your hip and shoulder separation. Just information that you can put in and it does not take very long and you don't have to then get the zip drive back from the kid, update the zip drive, you know, do stuff like that. And it's just such an easier process. And the best part of it, the kids then next year that come back and do the program again, we already have their library so they can see, you know, their progression. And that's another piece of this that I don't think people understand kind of going back to what Ryan was hitting on, you know, in a major league season's a long season, but a lot of these kids, you know, you're talking about if it's a youth or a high school kid, I mean, whether you want to debate this or not, this is the time of the place, but they go year round. Some of them go year round and they don't have a break with that. You're going to have the peaks and valleys. And like Ryan had hit on, you can go back to when you were doing well and what you were doing well. And there's times from a pitching standpoint, being a pitcher, knowing that, hey, man, you know, you start off, you're throwing the ball great, everything's going good. And next thing you know, you got like a 50 ERA and you have no idea what happened. You know what I mean? And you go back and you look at your mechanics and you see that they're completely different. Or sometimes at the higher level, there's not a huge difference, but you're able to see that and you can you can just adjust from that. For the coaches, our own coaches in here that use it, it's it's something that's made their life a lot easier just from a standpoint that it's they have they have kids that will send them videos from a game from the weekend and say hey look coach you know i went seven for seven this weekend you know did great you know look at this video or the flip side they're like hey you know i was oh for 10 this weekend you know i struck out five times what do you see and you know usually as everybody knows it's not as bad as they think or it's not as good as they think but at least they can get the feedback and it's easy for our coaches that, you know, maybe we're not at the game or, you know, we're at their own games and they can just take a quick video, write some notes and get it back to them. And just that feedback alone is invaluable for those kids. 100%. Thank you, Mark. And I, I do want to add one thing too, um, just kind of from the player scope, um, you know, sometimes on a team, you know, as a player, it's tough to get one-on-one -on -one time with a coach. You know, at the NCAA level, we're looking at, you know, 12 to 1 player-to-coach ratios. Um, and, you know, I've learned so much about kind of what goes into coaching from guys like Mark and some of our other customers. And, you know, coaching's hard, you know, dealing with a large group of kids and their families at the youth level or sometimes even at the, the, the college level, too, or high school level, it's tough. And I think I kind of want to point out just what Mark's saying is is these, these little moments where – you know, you can get a value moment and players can reach out to their coach. Coach can, you know, look at their video, even do a two minute breakdown on their device, send it back. It goes a long way. Um, me as, you know, kind of a role player, and I've said that a couple of times now, but like those little bits of, you know, investment from coaches, they go a long way, you know, and I think that's like a, one thing that gets me really excited about this project is being able to increase the amount of value moments between player and coach and increase that relationship and ultimately build player confidence. Even if it's just that slight minute, Hey, you look great. Keep up the good work. That's awesome. Because as Brian alluded to and Mark alluded to, you know, sometimes as a player, like your ceiling is in your head, <laughs> you know, you're only as good as you think you are. And those, those subtle little bits of encouragement, or even just like, even if it's criticism, just knowing that your coach is investing in you is, is a huge deal. Um, so that's something that we're super excited to kind of digitize, improve, and make more efficient for coaches and give players more access to. Uh, so thank you guys. Too, following, following Mark's comments, we love when we get feedback like that. I think we've heard the same thing from the UCLA's and Stanford's of the world that 
you know, number one, they think it's helping their kids. They think it's helping make them better players. And then from the coach's perspective, it's, it's uh, saving them a ton of time and they feel more efficient and productive with their usage of time. And um, those are things that like, we love to get that feedback. It's really meaningful and impactful for us because that's what, that's what we were hoping this project uh, would end up doing for, for both the players and their development and for the coaches um, when it comes to just maximizing their efficiency of their time. So, yeah, just let me know. Yeah. 100%. Mike, I'll flip it back to you. I want to be conscious of time for the folks on the East Coast, including Mike. So uh, uh, I'll flip it back to you. Uh, we can open up Q&A. I know that the chat's been a little quiet, but um, happy to flip it back to you, Mike. Yeah, no, thank you, guys. Um, you know, this, is, this has been great. Uh, we, we certainly appreciate you and the Futures app. And certainly, guys, if, if you're watching, you have questions, feel free to sometimes, you know, we don't want to be the first one to ask a question, but feel free to do that. Or you can contact myself or Jake, and we'll put our – our, our info in the chat if you want to follow up later and uh, and ask a question. But this video will be uploaded tomorrow in the video library. But again, I want to thank you guys because the goal of the ABCA is to put put uh, webinars and partners and, and companies like yourself that are going to help coaches be more efficient, uh, grow the game, help players. And, and you guys have just demonstrated multiple ways that all of those things will happen. Uh, so thank you for, again, working hard on this to – to help better uh, the game of baseball. So thank you guys. And uh, again, this will be up tomorrow. Uh, come see these guys in Dallas uh, this year uh, when we have the convention uh, the, that first week in January. But uh, as you wrap up your seasons or head into summer, summer ball, uh, good luck. And uh, again, thank you for tuning in tonight and uh, joining us at the ABCA. So thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you guys.